What's what's going on, people? We're live. It's Adam Henkel here and Nathan Fott here. Uh, we let's see let's see who we've got here. I see some people in the chat. We'll give it a few minutes here and and uh, see who we have showing up. If you can hear us, uh, sh let us know in the chat there. Hey guys, yes, someone can see us. Oh, is that Ooh. Doug? Is that Doug? If you can hear us, let us know if our audio is good. Nathan, maybe say say something. This is Nathan, everyone. Hello, everybody. Hello, Doug. Uh, nice to be here. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, Adam Henkel here with Makers Mob. This is Nathan Fault. We're both wearing our T-shirts. Yeah, this we're is twinsies. Like, twinsies. This is official. Yeah, um, 100%. Nathan is... I said we should do tuxedos, uh, matching tuxedos, <laughs> but it wasn't in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we got... Uh, so Nathan, you're from Pennsylvania, right? That's correct. That's right. So you're Northern Pennsylvania. I'm from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and we are... We're going to go through... Uh, we're excited. I'm excited. Yep. Nathan has been I'm a long, long time member of the Makers Mob, and uh, he's been around for a couple yeah. of years now. Oh, gee. Yeah, and we uh, we had the pleasure of kind of witnessing his journey building the Samurai Carpenter workbench. A couple was that a couple years ago now? Yeah, uh, at, yeah, about year and a half is when year I and completely half. finished it. But about two years ago, next month is when I think I started it officially. Yeah. Awesome. But it was it was a big process of milling logs and collecting logs so it was, yeah. it was like a multi-year process but for the actual construction of it, it was about three months total yeah awesome so nathan is going to share with us um kind of the, the first part of the journey tonight so uh just to fill you in we've got uh, i'll pull this up here uh this is that beautiful Ooh. beautiful little uh promo that you might have seen. Uh, tonight is the first night and we're going to do a three week thing here with Nathan. We're going to walk through the building of the Samurai Carpenter workbench, Nathan's mm -hmm. experience. Yep. Um, right from milling up the wood himself. Uh, did you did you fall the trees yourself? Uh, no, that part of the process uh, was not done by me. The reason for it was uh, all the trees didn't come or all the logs didn't come from the same location. Gotcha. And typically how I got acquired them is a lot of times people in my area consider a down tree worthless and they just want it gone. They don't want to deal with it, yeah. spend the time to chainsaw it up and then uh, season it and split it. That's just a hassle. We're, we're covered with trees in my area, uh, yeah. nice hardwoods. And to, if you just show up and say, Hey, do you have any plans for this log? they were more than happy to get rid of it. I've had some from family members, from friends, and some that just, I'm driving around and I see some logs laying and I'm like, hey, what's your uh, plans for these? And start a conversation. And uh, some people will say, no, I have uh, an uncle that is gonna take the logs and use it for something, or no, we're just gonna use it for firewood to heat our house. So it's, uh, but you always get to make a connection with somebody. Awesome. So and they get we, to hear your name. So it's totally. kind of like a networking, like you're promoting yourself as a, as a woodworker and then they get interested and say, Oh, well, Hey, do you have like, show me some stuff that you've made. And then they're more make that uh, personal connection. Awesome. So you can, uh, it's, all, it's yeah. always good networking to get, exactly. if you're trying to get uh, material like this yep. uh, before we get into that whole part of it, uh, I just want to quickly say, so uh, this week, is week one we're gonna go live for the next two weeks on tuesday same time eight o'clock eastern time uh so next tuesday and the following tuesday live to kind of this week we're going to touch or touch on the uh the milling process and preparing the wood and just kind of the inspiration of building uh the samurai workbench and then the next couple of weeks we'll talk about the joinery and actually you know the hardware and laying out you know the dog holes and all that stuff and and yeah. then Nathan's got a bunch of tips that he's kind of prepared uh, to share that things that he learned and, and along the way. So um, mm -hmm. before, so we get into the actual workbench, let's just do a little background. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Adam Henkel and I am a co-founder of Makers Mob. Uh, if you know the Samurai Carpenter, he's my brother-in-law. Uh, so that's my connection to him. 
Uh, Nathan, give us a little backstory to you. Like, uh, tell us okay. maybe, uh, you know, we already know you're from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, but what do you do like on your day to day? And then what mm -hmm. uh, what kind of got you into woodworking? How long have you been into woodworking in general? Okay. Yeah. So the story uh, starts like, I think probably before I was born. Uh, <laughs> so I, my father, who I don't want to be a depressing, but really he's not in my life, but he was a, a big craftsman himself. Uh, that was his full-time job, career. My mom helped him uh, over those years. They split up, and my mom just says I had it in my blood. Uh, right. In high school, I would skip lunch period or I'd eat really fast so I can hit back down to the shop class when no one's in there. And then the professor or this teacher comes in and says, dude, you can't be in here when I'm not <laughs> supervising. And I'm like, I promise if I cut off my finger, I won't like see the score or something. <laughs> so like, I was just always uh, interested in, in that kind of stuff. Uh, then so many years went by. I just, I was in college, did construction work for uh, some property owners. So I was kind of like, more of like a maintenance guy, I guess. Like, hey, we have to knock down a wall and, and put some drywall up or we're moving this wall over to this thing. Or, hey, I need you to go paint nine apartments uh, this week. So just kind of hands-on stuff and always been handy. Yeah. Uh, skip to like where we are today is I'm a uh, lineman for a uh, cable company. So I work out on the telephone poles doing uh, technology stuff all day that yeah. it kind of just like fills your head to the point where like you come home and you don't want to even touch a screen. Yeah. Um, so it got into like a way of like meditation almost just to get me out of the house. I'm, I'm not one to sit in the house and do watch TV a lot. If I am watching TV, it's usually like because I can't go outside or I can't go do something or it's too late to make noise, something along those lines. Um, so I, I'm a cable man that doesn't watch cable really. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of an oxymoron there. And you were saying, so you're, you're on call some nights. You were saying you're yep. out late last night, right? Yep. Uh, so, so I respond to uh, like outages and stuff. So anybody so, that doesn't like cable men, don't hate me. I'm the guy that comes and fix you up. If you, if you see Nathan nodding off, it's because he was up till like 3 a.m. Yep. or whatever last yep. night fixing yep. some cable. I, I, uh, <laughs> I put 25 hours in in the last uh, – since 10.30 yesterday morning. Crazy. Well, thanks right. for joining us. Yeah, um, uh, So the the project we're talking about is this beautiful mm -hmm. bench here. This is Nathan's bench, um, the Samurai Carpenter workbench that he, he built. We're going to dive into that now. But before we do that, I wanted to show off uh, – I wanted to show off these two projects Ooh. and we have a reveal for you guys at the end of this video. Nathan's yeah, going to share I with us. a nice special for you yeah, guys. His latest project that he built. But these uh, these two projects here uh, got Nathan some awards inside the Maker's Mob, mm -hmm. Maker's Mob. He for the uh, toolbox, which was another Samar Carpenter project on the right side of the screen. Uh, you won the project of the month contest, right? Yes. And that got you, I think, a t-shirt and uh, a whole bunch of router bits. You were router bits, I believe, yeah. Yeah. And then, and I think you were runner-up for the, is that gum tree? Uh, yep, yeah, it's sweet gum. Uh, I've also learned that they kind of call it a blonde walnut, yeah. which is, I after uh, kind of staring at it and working with it for a long time, it, it, it kind of makes more sense to call it a blonde <laughs> walnut because it's not as white as a maple or a lighter color wood but it's not as dark as a walnut either. So it's kind of an in-between walnut and maple for those that don't like that that harsh darkness or that bright uh, white wood. So it's kind of that. And it, it looks kind of like, it looks kind of the same kind of figure and yep. green pattern as a walnut too. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So that's some of his past projects uh, that won him some prizes inside the Maker's Mob. Let's get into... Uh, into this whole journey. So first, uh, what what was the inspiration for you to actually jump in and do this? I mean, you said you've been in woodworking for a while, so what, what was your inspiration? So over the years, I've, I, uh, I guess I can start probably maybe about uh, the year that my wife and I got married, we had our own place. At the time I worked out of town a lot, so I was home very little. Um, 
and then I kind of was trying to transition into uh, a position more at home than being away all the time. Cause it was like 230 days a year I was out of town and being a newlywed and stuff, it was just challenging. And we just, I just didn't want that life for me. And when kids come in, I've seen how that kind of lifestyle affects uh, families through coworkers and stuff. So I decided to start doing some woodworking on my days off because I would come home and my wife would be working. And as newlyweds, I'm just sitting around a, a house empty by myself and I have nothing yeah. to do. So like I said, as I, I don't sit around too well. I'm, I'm a busy beaver, always moving, moving. So I started uh, doing a few things where Christmas came up and I said, hey, darling, I smooth talked her a little bit and uh, said, hey, so this year for Christmas, how about we do something a little different? I really want to make something. I'm kind of like have that creative uh, drive. That I, I want and need to do something, um, but we don't really have anything for me to do that way. Uh, I actually went to college for pottery and I always thought I'd have a pottery studio um, at my home, but where we lived at the time, it just wasn't suitable for it. So I said, Hey, let me get a table saw. I was doing con some construction work and used uh, the DeWalt job site table saw uh, through the construction worker guys. And I'm like, Hey, this is a nice little table saw. Went and picked up, picked it up. That's what I would call my first like woodworking tool. Yeah. yeah. I know it's not a saw stop or anything like that, but that was my first like introduction into me buying a big tool for the woodworking specifically, not like a renovation. Cause I had tools for like drills and drill guns and all the construction kind of tools, but I just never had like a woodworking uh, tool set. So yeah. kind of, I ended up making uh, Christmas gifts off of the table saw. Uh, was it, did it look something like this? <laughs> Nope, nope. That's uh, that that's many years down the road, but it is close. Nathan made me this pen, by the way. That's like two years ago, three years yeah, ago. Yeah, sent that to me. Yep, I got a uh, got the lathe right behind me. It has some updates since I made that pen, but nice. Yeah. Um. So I ended up making. I think it was uh, little baskets. So uh, like you know how like wooden crates was like the fab. Like yeah. back around 2014, 15, like everything was mason jars and wooden crates. Yeah. So I ended up learning you could take like stickers, put it on the surface of a piece of wood, stain over top, remove the sticker and expose that lighter color wood. And you'd have a, a saying or a name. Yeah. So I did that for all of our family members and friends and put their name on it the year. Very custom stuff. I look back now and I'm like, oh man, I could have done that like so much better. <laughs> but at the time, everybody loved it. They still love it. People still talk about the gifts that I've given them over the years uh, coming over for visiting. So then that just moved into the next year. I said, hey, why don't I do the same, but add another tool? So instead of spending $1,000 on Christmas gifts, I would buy a new tool that would keep adding to the collection and cover the cost of making gifts for people. So you can either go buy a thousand dollars worth of stuff at the shop or at a store or buy yourself something useful that you can continue to use throughout the year. And yeah. that's how it just progressed into the shop I have today. And then, and then fast forward to what, what led you to this workbench? Like, oh, you... uh, so I ended up, I don't know how many years ago it was, uh, the samurai carpenter, had a video that was floating around YouTube. And at that time I'm watching tons of YouTube videos, trying to like understand and increase my skill. Cause YouTube's my free education. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't like watching entertainment stuff too much. I like to watch more educational things. So I came across this video of him building his bench and it was, I don't think it was like the full detailed video. It was more of a clip about him talking about the legacy and what, is our purpose as craftsmen and what are we trying to really do and the thing that got me was the legacy part uh, not so much for me but something that can be handed down for generations and generations something like this bench isn't something that just gets put on marketplace for a hundred dollars uh, <laughs> i hope not because <laughs> joe blow made it in his garage and, and you put a table saw on it or something funky or yeah. a mechanics bench it's nothing like that this is something that's high-end uh 
really worth um, the statue of, of creating it. So yeah. it, that was kind of, I was like, oh my God, that bench is amazing. So then I took a couple years and I was thinking like, how can I uh, build this bench? There's no way I can afford this wood. It's just way out of my price range. Um, and these are all these things that are just popping through my head for years. I was like always saving every workbench uh, photo that you see somebody post or uh, the ultimate workbench where the table saws in, built into the workbench. It's yeah, all yeah. these crazy things. Um, and then Jesse started to have some promotional things about starting up the Samurai Carpenter Woodworking School. Uh, I'm not sure if the how the orientation was that he named that school. Yeah. Uh, but this whatever that was called, uh, he start. I started seeing the promotions for it, and I, I realized I connected the dots. I was like, "Oh wait, that's the guy that made that video." And uh, I joined the the school. Got so inspired and just, just lots of like inspiration from him and other people in the community that I said, oh my God, I got to do this. I have to find a way. Jesse made a video of saying, hey, if you don't have the tools, if you don't have the wood, if you don't have, just go make something, sell something, do whatever you got to. If you want it that bad, find a way to make it happen. There's always a way. You just got to find it out. So I sold cornhole boards. Crazy. Uh, just all these crazy different things. And once I had my mindset that this was what I was going to do and I wanted to build this bench, uh, I wanted something that I could hand down to my son. Uh, that's a big motivation for this bench is I don't consider this my bench. I, I consider this my son's bench and I built it because right as my son was born, I was like, Oh my gosh, this would be awesome thing for me and him to do. Like, learn woodworking together yes i've known about some of it but not the level of jesse or other fine craftsmen i just knew more of like hey put some screws in and there we go so fast forward a little bit more and some people were taking down uh trees in our backyard not my yard but the neighbor's yard across the street and i'm like oh my gosh these things are massive and awesome, and I want them, but I had no clue how to do it. <laughs> and what, what kind of trees were these? That right there is ash. So we have the ash borer that's killing off all the ash trees yeah. in the area. So you can find ash pretty much everywhere around here because it's just dying off so fast. Yeah. Um, and your little helper is right yeah. there. We can see on yeah. the screen. So that's my son, Cameron. He would have been... Uh, I want to say a year, yeah, like a year and like two or three months old at that time. Um, so he's been with me every part of this journey because I was daddy daycare. I worked uh, four days a week, uh, 10 hour shifts. So I had fr or Thursday, Friday, Saturday off. So I had the time, I had my son and while mom was off at work, we went and the boys played. So we started uh, getting some logs and uh, had a friend that I met earlier than that for that has a sawmill and he kind of taught me how to use the sawmill. So I phoned him up and says, Hey, I don't, I can't afford to pay you. I am really sorry, but I have this awesome, like big batch of logs that these people are taking down. They're not like eight footers or anything, but they are, some are pretty nice size and you could probably make some money off of this. Um, and would you be willing to help me transport these logs to your mill? We mill them together and I'll take half of the yield and you take half and I will be manual labor. I'll help you out and do manual labor running the mill and stacking stuff. And that's how I first got into this like log urban logging process for like a small workshop. That's actually a pretty, that's a pretty uh, awesome tip. I mean, if mm -hmm. anyone's interested in, in milling their own wood, I mean, you didn't have the money to, to pay nope. the guy, but you offered him half the, half yep. the material after it's done. I mean, that's pretty, yep. that's pretty smart, Nathan. <laughs> you, I, yes. I don't know where I really came up with the idea. I think I was just spitballing yeah. ways to get someone interested. And I'm, I'm thinking like, hey, this is free material for him. If I help him do it, it's just him and I and some time. 
I would imagine he could still make some money off of this and help me out. Totally. And it created a friendship that, that we we're still really good friends uh, to this day and have some really exciting things coming down the pike. Awesome. Um, so, so this, this is the same ash tree here in these yep. photos, correct? Yep. Um, if we, uh, this is a different tree though, correct? Yes. This is the so, one. So the ash project kind of played out. I learned some, uh, some kind of like milling lessons for beginners yeah. through that process. Some things Which like is this. Oh no, this is the, this is the walnut mill. Correct. Yep. So that yeah. mill right there behind you, that's the mill that we were doing. Um, I learned that I ended up milling my wood too small. Oh, okay. So we kind of started over. I still have some of uh, those original beams up here in my uh, lumber rack. So, so that's the ash. That's the ash, like the branches section. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I have some of the wider, like, hunky chunky pieces uh we made some like coffee table size slabs out of those and i have a few of those in my basement still um so how did you like as far as milling it uh too small was it the thickness that you know yeah you, you didn't account for the shrinkage uh, yeah exactly okay. okay so i was saying hey with their assistance kind of looking at what i was trying to do um we said hey let's do it at an inch and a half and or yeah, I think it was an inch and a half uh, to an inch and a quarter. Thinking, oh, hey, we'll have like the, we'll mill it down. It won't take much to flatten it because it, it milled out really flat. And at that time, I really wasn't thinking of how wood dries, how things twist and bow and do all these crazy things during the drying process. It's a lot on lumber uh, to go through. And it's a lot of manual labor for people or for like humans to be, handling this to get stuff to dry properly totally and right there you can see a bunch of my pieces i think these were the new ones that we milled okay um and that's my son helping out we took <laughs> Love the little out. chainsaw that's awesome oh he's he's my buddy he's a, a definitely a i like helping dad kind of boy and he right. gets mad if i don't let him help so i'm really proud of him for stepping up and wanting to do stuff that's awesome uh, so how long, so did you, like your drying process, did you just put like, you know, put them out with the stickers, cover them and leave them to dry outside, just air dry? Uh, yes, sort of. We, I stickered them uh, and took, was it, I think I, actually, I think uh, I took them to my friend, a different sawmill friend who's local. I have a lot of sawmill friends locally. <laughs> uh who he has a kiln my first friend didn't okay. have a kiln so yeah. our concern was bugs i didn't want bugs to be entering my home my workshop is through the garage that enters into the house yeah so i didn't want bugs to be like infesting my house so i wanted to make sure they were kiln dried to be safe um i've learned now that hey we probably shouldn't kill dry them like that quick after uh after milling because they need some time to air dry but yeah those were some of those lessons learned of going through those steps and so i've made a, a little a few mistakes along the way but it only taught me something that i didn't know before so to me it's not so much a mistake it's more of a chance to learn something um as far as the milling process how many yeah. days how long was was that uh for you to take uh, on i, I want to say may, like maybe like a total of eight hours Okay. Um, because of my friend's schedule and my son's uh, attention to like to hold his attention yeah after yeah. about maybe two hours he would get fussy and we would uh, I would take him home for nap time and and then we'd just aim for the next weekend to do some more yeah. or he would do some on the day while I was at work on a day um, so it was just it was like little bits and pieces nothing that like oh my god we got to get all this done every day yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So that was kind of fun. And then if you go to the walnut pitchers, after I got Those some guys? logs, yep, after I got some logs under my belt, my grandfather calls me up and says, Nathan, you know our neighbor across the street, the one that uh, always uh, you did work for and cleaning up his like patio and just as a kid, just doing work around his house for them to earn a few extra bucks. I was like, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's up? He goes, well, 
He just had 40 some walnut trees brought in down. Oh my god. They, they sold the they sold the saw logs, but there's a lot of logs here. And I don't know if you're interested in them or not, because he knew I was starting to do this uh sawmill venture where I'm taking a couple logs that I got for free and sawmilling. He just thought that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> uh so I said, okay, well, I took two and a half hour drive up to see him. And I just happened to be there when the like logging truck with the big claw was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And they loaded up my truck with some of those big massive chunks. That and is amazing. We took them. We took them to the How middle. did you get that on there? Oh my god! That, <laughs> that, it was. Uh, it was without that claw because originally I was thinking, okay, maybe I could stand it up. Maybe I could drop a couple in my bed, thinking like I was only going to get logs maybe about like this. But then I saw these like Y uh, brand, like the crotches where it's nice and wide and big. And I'm like, you guys aren't taking this stuff. This is what everyone's like wanting all the figure and everything. <laughs> and that's when I learned that the sawmills don't want that. That's a defect in lumber grading. Um, but to someone like me, that's like what's going to sell your piece. That is so, awesome. Uh, my my first question when I saw this truck picture was <laughs> how was that to drive because uh, that's actually, way, that's weighed down. Were you scared? Oh, it's it's so weighed down, so <laughs> weighed down. This truck has taken so much abuse. I bought it like brand spanking new, and I'll tell you what. Over the years, this thing it it's a work haul. Uh, that truck was weighed down really heavy. And I was nervous about blowing a tire, but it didn't like sway all over like you would expect. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting it to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose control. But I had no problem. And it was even raining that night. So oh. it, I was driving home in the dark, in the rain. It was, uh, I think that was in the fall. And yeah, it was, it was an adventure. I have lots of them when it you're, comes to logging. You're, you're a brave man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tend to push the limits. Um, so we get to, I think, okay, we got this picture of the bandsaw. I have to ask yeah. you, is that, did you get that bandsaw just because you knew you were going to be doing the, yep. the, uh, that the was my profiles? That was my first tool purchase for the bench specifically. And when I said I was making, uh, uh, cornhole boards to sell and I was making like just random baskets out of scrap wood because at that time I only had uh, uh, pine like I was we live in a new build development so contractors were constantly thrown out two by fours and uh, two by sixes and eights and twelves so I was just making like little baskets anything yeah. out of pine like the crafty kind of items yeah. Yeah. so this ash is actually my first hardwood that i ever used um huh. so it's kind of like that was my first step and once i got into jesse's school i stopped using pine for the majority of everything because i learned this new technique that with some work i can be using these nicer hard woods um compared to like a lowe's or home depot two by four for every little project i did yeah so so you got the uh, the lumber milled up at the mill. You yep. brought it back. Uh, how did I got you... it dried and then brought it back? And okay, I let it air dry to kind of like acclimate to the uh, your the climate in the shop. Yep. 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 So and then... I did do that part right. That was my one lesson that I learned that before doing that step. That hey, I got to let this settle for a little bit. And did you have, so then this, the, the picture we're looking at on the right here, is it actually, it's been dimensioned. Do you yeah. have a planer and joiner? How did you go about doing that? Yes. So over those years of like how I said, I was uh, buying a new tool like once a year for Christmas and stuff like that. So at this point here, I was using my dual job or table saw. Yeah. Job yeah. site table saw and the DeWalt planer. So right um, when my son was born, that was actually like one item that I bought with like a bunch of like saved up Lowe's Christmas, uh, gift cards. So I had like so many gift cards from Lowe's that I saved up and I was like, Hey, I'm going to use this towards this planer. Cause I hear everybody saying, this is the one to go with. Cause yeah. I can't, I can't afford a real woodworking tool. What are you talking about? That's so expensive. That's like thousands of dollars. I, I can't spend a thousand dollars on something. My family needs to eat. Um, so 
that was just kind of my naive of not knowing how to make something happen. And through all this process, you kind of just learn to make ways that even though it does sound expensive, I, I made the, the bad calls multiple times where I buy the cheaper tool and I get the cheaper quality. And yeah. I, I quickly realized that. And the bandsaw I had before the one in this photo was a uh, craftsman, like uh, 14, uh, I don't want to, I don't even know what number it was. Uh, it was just a small bench top uh, bandsaw that I thought could do everything. And I couldn't cut a straight line on that thing for the life of me. <laughs> Tried buying tune up blocks and all these YouTube, just nothing worked for me. So I, I sold that. Save, put that money towards my Laguna uh, 14BX and I just saved up money and I told my wife, I said, hey honey so I have a lot of money saved up that you probably aren't aware of <laughs> Ken I'm going to go buy something because it's on sale and I hope you don't get mad at me and then we had, we had our uh, husband and wife discussion on that and she ended up saying go do it because you're going to do whatever you want to do anyways <laughs> there, there you go. So I, mean, so I was like, well, you, it's it's not like uh, that's not the truth. Uh, so I ended up going to get it in October before uh, building the bench. The wood was still like acclimating. Some of it was I still didn't even have some of it milled yet at this point because yeah. I had uh, I didn't have the walnut. Uh, the same weekend I got that bandsaw was the same weekend I loaded up the walnut in the bed of the truck. Wow. So. Wow. It was kind of like a, a lot of process of like, hey, I know I'm not going to be able to buy all these tools at once. So I got to kind of space it out, like save up, buy, save up, buy, save up, buy. And, you know, that's, that, that, that's one process. thing that hearing your story here, and I'm sure people who are listening in are, are probably thinking the same thing. Like, yep. uh, it's pretty remarkable that, you know, that your journey just to get to the point where you're making this bench, you, you made the decision mm -hmm. and you you know, you didn't really let anything stop you. Like you, you, yep. you sold cornhole boards yeah, uh, exactly. to save up. Like that's pretty cool to, yeah. to be able to look at this finished product, uh, this bench yep. and, and, you know, that, to hear that, that whole journey. I mean, I didn't even know a lot of those details. That's, that's, yeah. that's pretty awesome. And that's why like in the past I've said, I went from making cornhole boards to that bench, the time frame from the time that I was making those cornhole boards and I got the bandsaw. That was in like uh, October, yeah. and then the next summer is when I started the construction on all of the uh, parts for milling it up, or not like milling on a bandsaw, but milling final dimension yeah. for the yeah. joinery. So yeah. I started that in like, I think uh, May or June, I don't remember. May or June, somewhere in that ballpark, uh, I started, but it was October when I bought the bandsaw mill, got some stuff um, uh, going. So that's the time frame I went from cornhole boards to this fine joinery. Yeah. And that's such a short time. I'm not, I never did any of this joinery until like the January before building the bench. So this bench was like your first yeah. like major woodworking project. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, what? yep. So Jesse has a, a, a sharpening setup for yeah. his whetstones. Yeah. That was my first time I've ever even done a, a tenon and a mortise. Oh my gosh. I've seen people do it. I've heard the terms, but I didn't even really know what it was until those videos. Wow. And then, so that was my first time ever trying to cut a mortise or a tenon. And then to like top it off, like that specific project has three tenons. It's like a, a triple trip, tenon, a triple yeah. tenon. So to, and it, it goes all the way through the wood, not just like a hidden tenon. Yeah. So I was it's like, exploded. really, I, was, I just really, I guess, go big and go home. Cause I said, you know what? I, I'm going to need some practice at this. I knew I was going to need some practice. I'm going to figure it out. I, but I just, I need some, before I feel comfortable cutting into all this wood that I spent hours and hours preparing for the bench, let me do some smaller things that I can uh, still utilize in the shop. It'll help me for the time I get to the bench because yeah. I need to sharpen chisels to build the bench. So I'm building things as a practice piece, as a learning piece, and it's also going to help me get to my end goal. That's so amazing. And then that uh, carpenter toolbox. Yeah. 
that was my second uh, tenon in uh, mortise project I've ever done. So was that that was before the workbench? That was in between. That was the month after doing the sharpening stone. Oh, okay. okay. So, I, gotcha. so basically in a January, I went from a triple through tenon for the very first time to my second time ever going to the tusk wedged tenon. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so, and well, then, then it was just a couple months after that I was working on the workbench. That's, that's unreal. Yeah. I love I love hearing this story. I mean, if you guys if you guys hear appreciate hearing Nathan's story, just let us know in the chat. Um, yes, please. We are we're getting close to wrapping up yep. here uh, for this week. We're gonna we're gonna come back next Tuesday, eight o'clock Eastern time, and we're gonna talk about uh, the joinery side of of this, the glue up of the yep. top. Um, we're gonna highlight some things that that Nathan kind of discovered along the way, some yep. trick tricks and tips. Um, as they say in the industry, tips yep. and tricks uh, that we're gonna we're gonna show you guys and kind of get into a little more detail there. But man, it was super super awesome yeah. hearing hearing you just kind of give the background story. Um, yep. Hearing that, I mean, you didn't let anything stop you. You didn't have the money, so you found the tree and and worked out that yep. deal with the guy at the sawmill. Um, yep. Such such a cool story and pleasure having you in the community. Well, thank you. Really really awesome. I, I try to work to inspire. I, I may not be the most skilled in the group because I know there are so many more that know so much more about me, so many more years. I'm still fairly young uh, and kind of newer into the venture of fine woodworking. So it's. I hope that my story helps inspire some guys that are just thinking about it or starting off where I was when I was making cornhole boards. Totally. Um, because when you're doing that, you just kind of feel like, man, this is so expensive. That's like so much money. How am I ever going to be able to get that kind of a shop? There's no way. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you there is a way. It's it's fairly simple, but it just takes some work. Yeah, it takes time, and and we're not the. Uh, it's not really the the right uh, microwave mindset culture where it's going to happen quickly, right? It's exactly. Take some time and planning. Um, Micro goals is what I call it. Is totally like a, a short term goal. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so if you guys want to tune in next week, we're going to be back here Tuesday, April 6th, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern time. That's 5 o'clock Pacific, if you're in the Pacific. And uh, we're going to get into the joinery. Um, Nathan, you are an inspiration. I know when well, I, post, I posted about this, and instantly there was a couple people that were you know, posted right away saying how you were an yeah. inspiration to them in this workbench. Um, so we're super happy at the Makers Mall awesome. to have you in the community. and just joining us here. So uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Nathan, any final words? Uh, I have a two things actually. Oh, first, we have to reveal. First, first thing is um, I've helped a lot of people with uh, the workbench and I am always willing to take questions or uh, I have like, I created like a note list cause I hoped to be able to help other people nice. kind of nice. with some of my tips and tricks and uh, have pictures as examples. So anybody that's thinking about it of like, Hey, what do you think about this? Or uh, do you have any ideas for that? Feel free to message me on Facebook, friend me, whatever. I have, uh, I've helped out probably maybe like 14 guys now um, awesome. that have at least started their bench. Yeah. Um, I don't know if all of them have finished it. And I'm buddies with one that's making his second samurai bench right now. Yeah, I so, was actually talking with Cody before yep. this and I was trying to get him on next week uh, with us, but he's nice. on vacation. Oh uh, man! I'm gonna, so I'm we gonna may we may be. Uh, I'm going to see if we can line it up, but we might yes. be able to pull him the, in the final video because he'll have more of his bench done. Potentially, we'll see. Potentially. He might be. He might might not be back then. He doesn't know uh, yet. So okay. we're working yes. it out. Yep, but, I think uh, he might be going to Texas. Uh, Texas, I think, is where he said he was going next. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, if you don't know Cody's story, I mean, his house burnt down in the fires yeah. uh, last summer. Right. And, yeah. uh, and he lost the first samurai workbench. So he's working on samurai workbench number 2. two. Yeah. 2.0 for him. Yeah. So, um, so it's pretty cool. And he, what he just did is, uh, the wedge tenons that are on the legs, yeah, like the, the tusk that come up and down to kind of like hold the wood in place. He actually, he, I was supposed to do it for him, but he knows how busy I am. So he gave the project a go right for himself there. is yeah. He, uh, he made 
he took the ashes from where his old woodworking bench was in the fire. Yeah. Yeah. He took those ashes, saved them, and somehow wanted to incorporate them into his workbench for the new one as a memory and kind of a legacy to this whole – this bench is a, a basically – it's more about of a story as craftsmen than anything else because this piece is – going to be in your shop longer than anything else yeah uh, sure so because so, it's too heavy to move it, because it's too heavy to move. <laughs> and, and i don't even think a chainsaw could cut through this this thick stuff so yeah uh, so he ended up using epoxy and made custom uh tusk with the uh, clear epoxy and the charcoal pieces of his old bench and he used it for his new bench and that's awesome. i think he said he's going to call it a uh, dragon tusk or something like yeah, that yeah. Yeah. Uh, which was really him and I were spitballing different names to like kind of like trademark that little task that he did. Yeah, he just so, he shared photos of that like half just a couple days we ago. Went. Well, uh, he just shared more right before we oh, went just live more? here. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So um, yep. Second thing is we're going to do a nice little reveal of a project that I have been working on since January. Nice. Uh, some things just kind of fell into place. I I've always wanted to make like furniture and. I've all like up until more recently, I've just said, I don't have the space for stuff. I don't have the tools for stuff. And now I'm like, Hey, I do have the tools. Space is still a little tight, but I'll, I'll figure it out. I want to do this. Like you, like I said earlier, I, I didn't let things stop me then. And I'm really not going to let them stop me now. <laughs> uh, my friends that come to the shop, they're like, man, this is so tight. I don't even know how you work in here. I'm like, you just make do. Yeah. But I have a, a table commission piece that I gained some inspiration from Jesse's uh, dining table. And yeah. if you've never seen that, that thing is awesome. This has a lot of similarities with that. And I made a few of my own tweaks to kind of make it my own. Um, and I've enjoyed this process so much. And I, one of those sawmill uh, things coming down the pike I told you about is yeah. – I've actually been asked to like partner with two or three different sawmills locally to start building their clients' bases because they do some welding, but they don't do woodworking like I do. And they oh, want okay. they have customers wanting these wooden bases. Yeah. So I'm gonna have a series of like six uh bases or so yeah. kind of designed up and Customers can go to their sawmill, pick out their big, massive slabs, tables, or benches, or whatever, and then come to me to build the wooden bases with uh, awesome. fine joinery because there's not very many people in my area that's doing this kind of stuff. So from cornhole boards to <laughs> custom table bases. Let's see this project. Yep. Okay. Let's see what you got Let here. me see. Is there a way for me to flip this around? I don't know. Okay. I'm going to try doing this the best that I can. Please be in mind. Woo! Nice. So, so this river here, table. Yep. So this here, I had uh, me and a buddy at the sawmill. I said, hey, I have these clunk or I have these other mills. I'm going to put you to, big screen here. Hold on. I have uh, these uh, other mills that want me to do some work for them. And let's do a practice run. So two days after we came up with this plan, we got our first client just by accident and says, Hey, I want to have a table done and I really want you to do it. I've been following you for a good bit of time now and I want something just really awesome. I'm a scuba diver. I want it to look like a river or an ocean going down through That's like amazing. a trench or something. So this is actually a dive master who certified my wife for scuba diving which is part of my wife and i's uh love story that is so cool dude that is absolutely so, gorgeous so this is my first like high-end furniture piece so the um, difference between yours and the samurai is that he's got a huge hole in the middle yes. of his. Yeah, and I filled it. <laughs> I filled it in, yeah. So this, uh, this, this table here was actually a collaboration project with my one good friend at the sawmill. And uh, he worked on a lot of the epoxy stuff. And I did the custom base design because that's what I'm starting to get known for around these areas. And that I'm in awesome. Lancaster. So I have to compete with the Amish. Yeah, and, absolutely. Every other construction guy that's yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to do woodworking and 
So it's, it's kind of cool that I'm getting a name for myself. I'm having a lot of people come reach out to me. So once you start putting yourself out there, things just seem to happen. Yeah. Uh, you show that you have the skills and bam, people are ready to come meet you. And they, they, you're really selling yourself, not, not so much the project. When you're talking to clients, they, they want to know more about you, not just the project itself. Because anybody can build the same project and yeah. look identical, but they want to know the story behind stuff. Totally. Well, I mean, you're also an awesome yep. guy. And when people get to know you, I'm sure they just <laughs> it's, want it's to do business smile. with you too. Yeah, it's the it's smile. It's the smile. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks again. We're going to wrap this up, guys. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope oh, you guys were inspired um, by Nathan and his story. And yep. we'll be back next week, Tuesday. Yep. I look forward to it. And, and anybody have any questions? Uh, tag me in uh, the group or send me a private message, whatever you feel comfortable with. Awesome. And guys, if you guys, uh, I mean, some of you, some of you here, we're, we're, we're doing this free. So we're kind of streaming all different places. Um, yep. If you want to, if you want to get in on the makers mob and join the community, there should be a link somewhere around the posts that you've seen. Um, yep. Make sure you guys check that out if you want to. Uh, otherwise next Tuesday, same time, same place. Um, We'll, we'll see you there. Sounds great. See you okay. guys next week. See you guys later. Have a great rest of your evening. Uh, we're going to sign off. And that's Bye. it. That's it for us. See you later. Adios. <laughs> uh, How'd ninja, that go for you? Wood Ninja up.